Hi everyone, Paul Natasha Scale Modeler, welcome to another kit review. Uh, today we're going to review the Ravel 125th Starskin Hutch for Torino, or the Straight Tomato as it was nicknamed in the show. So I just bought this at Christmas as a present from Brett, cheers buddy. I wanted to build it um, straight away but complete lack of car skills, I thought I'd get a couple under my belt. So that's done now, so hopefully I'm ready to do it and uh, you'll see a series of At The Bench updates on this as well. So. In your typical American style Ravel uh, box, so they're very short, very square. I wish a lot more kits were like this because they're making it a lot easier to store. It's a very stocky box. We've got some great box art on the front, Starsky and Hutch and the Torino itself, with a backdrop of a city. Uh, I think it's a 10 plus um, age and it's a level 2, which means moderate, glue required. Paint with acquired and yeah, 10 plus age group. So nothing too difficult there for us. On the side, good survey cam, we've got pictures of the built car itself, including the engine, paintwork, interior, etc. On the other side, we've got some information on the vehicle itself. I'm not going to read it. But excuse me a minute, I've just got over flu and I'm oh, absolutely knackered from it. So it's a top paragraph, if you want to read it. Pause it, have a little read. There you go, and then we've got the paint call outs there as well. So aluminium, flat black, flat white, full engine blue, gloss red, semi gloss black, steel, transparent red, and turn signal amber. So that's it, not a lot of paints required. Whether you just get away with a gloss red, I don't know. I think you need to get that colour pretty specific. So, top of the box off. Pop that over there. Inside we have a sprue of chrome instructions, the body shell, the wheels, the chassis, all as one, all bagged, which is good. Clear parts, nicely bagged, absolutely fantastic actually. Interior, bonnet, etc. A couple of different sprues in one bag. It looks like engine, transmission. Running gear parts and decals. So we'll get to those last. They look like fun. Great. So pop all this stuff on the side. Got the instructions as well, an A4 sheet, which is good. We'll pop all that over there and start. Let's start with the interior. So I grab my knife, pop it open. Bags. So, first off, we've got the bonnet. A couple of components for the engine bay, the wing mirrors. They're a bit rough to be fair. The dashboard, steering wheel, the bonnet. Definitely mold release agents on there, but easy to get off. Moulding this, it's quite a horrid red plastic actually, it isn't the best plastic. Um, but the parts themselves, although they are quite rough, they're not too bad. The bonnet's got some detail underneath, which is good to see. I'm not sure what that is, it looks like it's the rear part of the... No, I don't know what that is actually. Back of that bench, yeah, it's the back of the seat, back of the front seat, but yeah, no problems there. There's no flash evidence, so it's very crispy. Done just that red plastic is pretty damn nasty to be fair. We've got two other parts there, I'm not sure what they are, or oh, they fell off, but they're loose. But again, nothing, nothing of any interest, it's just a, a part of the vehicle, so that can be going in there too. We've got the interior, so the floor pan, as you can see, this front and rear seats, the side wall, uh, door cards, etc. All there, nicely crisply cut out. All in black interior, so nice and simple to paint. It's, it looks like PVC to me in the pictures and the videos and whatnot. So, a glossy finish. The floor's textured, so again, that's quite a nice touch. Um, 
It's carved it, I assume, so I'll probably flock it. We shall see, but yeah, no, not too bad at all. The detail is quite good. The hand window winders on there are well molded. The seats are well done. Very, very good. I'm not sure what age the kit is. Uh, I think it is fairly new. Let's have a little look on the box. So it's 2014. I think that is how old the kit actually is. So only a couple of years old. It's my first Revel car kit I've ever built. So it'll be an eye opener. It looks a very simple kit, which is good. Right, so we've got a few sprues. We've got running gear, so differential, anti-roll bars, etc. We'll go on the closer up cam so you can see. So again, nothing to write home about there. Fairly crisply done, some ejector pins to get rid of. But the detail is actually quite good on the back of those. We've got engine detail. Which this looks actually really good. To be fair, you can see all that. So they're nicely crisply done. This is a much better plastic. Prop shaft. Exhaust inlet. Uh, uh, shooting there. Yeah, it must be the exhaust outlets. Rocker covers. Actually, not rocker covers, cam covers. Dry belt, so yeah, very nice. That's not going to be a problem at all. And I'm painting up in that lovely full blue. It's going to look rather good. We've got a radiator, more running gear, etc. Detail is quite nice in that radiator. That's going to look rather good when it's all painted up. So again, nicely made. And then we've got the exhaust system, which is huge. Look at that. Absolutely massive. <laughs> all moulded in one piece as well, so... That's going to be nice, quick, simple to paint, stick on. Where you go, you've got a bulkhead, what I'm assuming is the brake, uh, the wheel hubs, etc. Yeah. And that's it. And again, no problem at all, no flash on there. Much higher quality plastic to black. But yeah, there's no problem there at all. They look really, really good. So again, like I say, the exhaust, it's a big exhaust system, my god. Clean apart, chrome we'll do next. Not going to be a long review of this because there's not all that much in the kit. Chrome parts, let's have a look what they look like. They're actually really well chromed. Let's whiten out the camera a bit. They are really well chromed, but it is out of scale chrome, unfortunately. So they will be stripped. And painted or a tri bare metal foil, which I've never used before. Don't know, we just use alkali chrome like normal. We'll see on that one, but yeah, they definitely need stripping, but they are high quality, very nicely done. I just think leaving those chrome makes it look a little bit too toy like. I suppose you could dull over them a little bit, but yeah. Will definitely be stripping, but yeah, there's a few parts to strip, but again, very nicely made. We'll do the clear part, and that's the last sprue. Then we get to the body, etc. And the clear parts can make or break. And they're not too bad, they're not, it's not crystal clear, there's a bit of marring on the glass and a bit of distortion, but nothing it's going to cause any real dramas so do we have no door glass in this no okay it's a bit random so I've not noticed but we certainly will in a minute there's no door glass no there's not <laughs> okay that's really random uh, in there we've got some red clear parts for the tail lights at the back and the uh, I think they're nicknamed a the Kojak the movable red light at the top I'd love to be able to make that light up it's definitely something I might look into to be honest but again no problems there at all it's, I don't get over that that there's no clear parts but we'll get some instructions in a minute now the body I mean look at the size of that thing it's a big car huge bonnet 
typical 70s muscle car. Really is absolutely huge. So now we have got to get this out without wrecking everything. Which might be more fun than it appears. Okay, not just our force in it, but there we go. God, that is a tight fit. Yeah, 2014 kit. Okay, there for the wheels. There are the tyres. And there's the body. God, there's a good weight in that body. That really has got a good heft to it. Now, the body is fairly clean. There's a few marks, a few seams to get rid of. Actually, to be fair to it, it's not that bad at all. A few things to be wary of, the raised Ford on the bonnet there, and the Gran Torino on the side wings there as well, but that is a big, big car. Very impressive, that's a big hefty weight of plastic, really is. Body looks great, there's no real seam lines on there to get rid of. Go over it well. <coughs> A bit of a debate at the minute about keying bodies, but I always key them. Nice bit of 4000 wet and dry all the way up to 12 to smooth it all off and then probably key it back with six or 8000 grit again. But it doesn't look too bad at all. The chassis, again, quite nicely detailed underneath. As you can see, nothing inside. We've got some weird numbers. I see that's a kit number, is it? No, it's not there. No idea what that is then. It's, uh, it's definitely a 2014 kit as you can see in there. So again, chassis, no bother at all. Tyres, rubber, not the greatest quality, but once you get rid of that seam, freeze the job again. Freeze it up, sand them off, mat them because they are ultra shiny. They're not going to look too bad. Two different sizes, front and rear. They're not going to look too bad at all. So overall the kit looks great, to be fair. It's a simple kit. Oh, we've got four pins there as well for the wheels. They can go in there. It's a simple kit. It's not going to be a massively challenging build. The paint job will probably be the hardest bit and getting those decals on, which we'll get to in a second. But we'll get rid of them now. So just a handful of decals, as you can see. Got the tomato stripe down the side, number plates, wooden dash effects, steering wheel, gauges, the four badges, etc. etc. So nothing too technical there. With there being a new kit, I hope these will not fall to bits, because if they do, I'll cry. Because uh, I don't fancy painting that black outline around those decals at all. So definitely something to be aware of. One thing I do like. Uh, if you can see that, just make sure you can. Every part is labelled. All 77 of them are all individually labelled, which is a very nice part. So you can literally, 57 is the fan shroud, etc. So that's a real nice touch. Over here we've got the colours used and the legends called out for them. About your decals. So, very, very actually good instructions for Revel. Obviously this is the American subsidiary of Revel, so it's different to Revel Germany. Yeah, Illinois, so maybe you get a better kit, I don't know, but this looks to be a fairly decent kit to me. Initial stages, engine building, that looks fairly straightforward and simple. I've got a resin distributor cap on the way and coloured leads for it as well, so that adds quite a bit of detail to it. On to install it into the chassis, radiator, hoses, etc., the exhaust system, prop shaft, wheels, tyres, dashboard, interior. 
So it's not going to be a massively long build. I am a bit concerned about the no glass on the inside. I just think it's very, very strange, but okay, it's the way they depicted it. I was looking at other people's builds. I was looking at the track works on yesterday, and I can't remember him having no glass on the side, but that's by the by. But yeah, like I say, it looks to be a fairly simple build. Nothing too challenging at all. And that's it, decal location on the back. Simple, I think the hardest bit, like I say, is going to be the paint job, getting the stripe in the right position, because I'm going to use the decals. And that's it, so overall, fantastic. It looks a good kit to me. It's a bit rough and ready, um, but part of the building is a fun of uh, building the kit so it'll be my first ravel and uh, I'll be back very soon with an after bench update and we'll see how we're getting on with it. So there we go there's a review of Ravel's 125th Starsky and Hutch for Torino. Uh, looks to be an interesting kit I need to find that red colour for it. Uh, figure out what we're going to do with the chrome. I think we're definitely going to de-chrome it and repaint it and like I say we'll start off with that engine so we're going to start tonight and we'll detail it up a little bit. And obviously the bonnet opens as well, so the engine bay can be seen. So we need to get some pics of the engine bay. Make sure we get it relatively looking right. And uh, that's it. So there you go. So there's a review. I'll be back hopefully in a week or so of another bench update. And we'll see how we get along with the kit. So thanks for watching. Catch you around. I'll see you soon.